For my project, I will be exploring Boston's West End before and after redevelopment. In this section, I will be focusing on the West End prior to redevelopment with an emphasis on what the area was like socially and demographically rather than from a physical sense. Prior to redevelopment, the West End was an area for immigrants. The first immigrant group that came to the West End is shown in this picture, and that is the Irish. Primarily escaping the potato famine, thousands of Irish moved to the West End and took up permanent residency throughout the mid-1800s. In doing so, they were able to maintain a group identity, and this picture demonstrates a common theme that I will be driving home about the West End before redevelopment, and that is literal and social intimacy. While this may seem like an ordinary picture, Leonard Nimoy, the famous actor, is actually one of the gentlemen in the picture. Nimoy grew up in Boston's West End and was very fond of his childhood. In an interview, Nimoy once remarked that he thought living in the West End was an interesting and healthy way to grow up. During his childhood, the neighborhood changed so that demographically it was about 60% Italian and 25-30% to Jewish. Nimoy thought that these groups mixed well together as he had both Jewish and Italian friends growing up. From a young age, Nimoy's father and grandfather both worked very hard, often from dawn till dusk, and Nimoy grew to have a great sense of respect for responsibility and the hardworking people all throughout the West End. Here is an aerial view of the West End prior to redevelopment. While I don't want to spend too much time on it, I did want to touch on what the area looked like physically. The streets were mostly lined with brick apartments and neighborhood stores. Everything was all very close together, and since the West End's inception, it was a family-friendly community. I believe this photo shows the physical intimacy and closeness of the West End, which is what I believe ultimately fostered the social intimacy that I mentioned earlier. Families throughout the West End used to jam into apartment buildings. You would be forced to share common areas with those you lived with, such as bedrooms and bathrooms. Often, people would become very close with the other families in their apartment buildings, as kids would play together, and there was a certain respect held between adult males, the vast majority of which who were blue-collar factory workers. Many families would also practice a religion during this time period, so this was another way that people would bond prior to redevelopment. This is a picture of the Old West Church on Cambridge Street, which was one of the busier streets in the West End. This picture was taken in the early 1900s or late 1800s, and actually, this church still remains standing today. Perhaps the reason it was never taken down was due to its religious significance. Going to Sunday Mass was important to West End families, and the Old West Church was the most popular church due to its size. Okay, so this is the title of an audiobook. As you could see, it's called The Greatest Neighborhood, This Side of Heaven. Uh, this is referencing the West End prior to redevelopment. Uh, this I actually saw this phrase on a cup that you could buy at the West End Museum. But this is what I guess some people used to refer to the West End as and was generally how a lot of people felt. So I think it truly shows how much people cared for this city. Okay, so kind of wrapping up this section, I wanted to share some accounts from people who actually lived in the West End. Uh, I was able to find a bunch of these online and I think it really conveys how passionate the inhabitants were about the area that they lived in, and also how much they missed the area. So Vincent Navarro says his heart broke when urban redevelopment started because he couldn't go back to his home where he lived with his three brothers and two sisters uh, after his parents migrated from Italy. And then Philomena Vivolo says she remembers her brother and sister-in-law not wanting to leave their house so badly that they put sheets up over their windows so that people wouldn't be able to tell that they were still there. Frank Petkowick 
says his grandmother was an immigrant and she worked so hard to save up enough money to eventually afford a, a house. Uh, he was so proud of her. And he says the streets were always filled with kids when he was younger. And the whole street, everyone knew everyone. Lily and Mirabella shared that you can go into any drugstore and they knew you. And if one particular day you didn't happen to have enough money, the store owners would say, okay, and they'd give you what you wanted to get. And then you would just come back and pay the rest later. Hopefully the last section, the West End before redevelopment, gave you a sense of how beloved the West End was. And in this section, the West End after redevelopment, we're going to contrast that feeling of endearment to that of frustration and regret. Once again, I'm not going to focus a ton on the physical nature of the West End, but I did want to show this photo to demonstrate how different the area looks. The demolition was very expansive, sparing only a few old buildings. The demolished area would soon be replaced with high-rises in an effort to make the area more commercial and to draw in more tax revenue. This photo depicts a family walking over the rubble from the demolition. As you can see, this picture is a far cry from the busy streets of the Old West End. It is not apparent whether or not this family still resides in their original home, but it is very possible that they were one of the thousands of families forced from their homes with nowhere to go. This is a photo of members of the Boston City Council and Housing Authority walking through the streets and looking over West End housing conditions. This symbolizes the removal of families and influx of a more upper-class neighborhood. This removal of families by this group pictured created a sharp change in the social aspect of the West End. Going back to Leonard Nimoy, he said the social aftermath was a tragedy because it was a wonderful tight-knit community that was destroyed and he still harbors some ill feelings about the urban renewal project to this day. The general perception surrounding redevelopment in the West End was and has not been positive. Families were supposedly going to be able to move into the new luxury high-rise apartments, but they simply couldn't afford it. In the end, families had to find new places to live, and the intimate community feeling has been taken away without restoration. While residents of the West End always believed demolition was the wrong decision, they eventually got an apology from the Boston Redevelopment Authority. In 2016, Brian Golden, director of the Boston Redevelopment Authority, issued a formal apology. He remarked, By the time I was born in the mid-60s, the old West End had already been demolished in the name of so-called slum clearance in a misguided redevelopment strategy. However, I feel it's only appropriate that I set the tone for this event and our relationship going forward by acknowledging and apologizing for the past misdeeds of the BRA. Although the destruction happened decades ago, the scars still remain. Time has helped to heal these wounds, but the lessons we have all learned from the West End is what brings us together tonight. The BRA of today in no way condones the destruction of neighborhoods and the displacement of residents that happened in Urban Renewal's wake, and I want to offer my heartfelt apology on behalf of the agency to the families of the West End that were affected. Overall, urban redevelopment was a mistake for the West End. It destroyed a hard-working area where children could have enjoyable childhoods and families could rely on each other. Pictured here is the West End Museum. Its purpose is to operate and maintain a neighborhood museum dedicated to the collection, preservation, and interpretation of the history and culture of the West End of Boston. It is still standing today and is a place that people who lived in the West End hold very close to them and a place that I plan on visiting if ever in Boston. I hope this documentary has given you the chance to see how prideful the residents of the West End were prior to redevelopment and makes you consider the painful consequences redevelopment can have. Thank you for watching.